Right, now we look at question three. Now the diagram below represents two phases of meiosis. You can always expect a question in the exam in both paper one and two on meiosis and they are going to give you diagrams. You must know how to identify the diagrams. So here, diagram one, this is happening. You can see here, look at this, I have got entire chromosomes which would have made a double row of chromosomes during the phase before this and that double row of chromosomes means that this is going to be anaphase 1 okay because there is a double row of chromosomes in anaphase 2 there'll be a single row of chromosomes that then split Okay, now if I look at diagram two, anaphase has already happened, so this becomes telophase, and it's telophase two. And how do I know that it's telophase two? Because I have my sister chromatids here. So these are, I mean, cr sister chromosomes, these are chromatids, or we can call them sister chromosomes okay and these cells are going to be unidentical so meiosis results in four unidentical daughter cells oh man daughter Cells. Okay, and so this is anaphase 1, telophase 1. Whenever you see a diagram, the first thing you do is you do your label. So A, so what would A be? A would be your centriole. And there's a centriole here as well. And the two centrioles come from a centrosome. And what do you have in the middle of a chromosome that holds the two chromosomes together? I mean the two chromatids together? That is a centromere. And the reason I'm writing centromere is don't confuse a centriole and a centromere. Okay? The centriole is at the poles. So centriole equals pole. And centromere merely holds the two chromatids together. And that's how you remember it. Centromere merely holds the two chromatids together. Centriole is at the pole. All right? B is going to be what? Think about it. It is a whole chromosome where these are chromatids. So there's a chromatid, there's a chromatid, there's a chromatid, and there's a chromatid. So those are your chromatids that are held together by a centromere. Chromatid and chromosome. Chromosome has two chromatids. Okay? Right. Identify part A. Easy peasy. It's the centriole. And remember, why do we fill in all the labels? We fill them in because it helps our brain to figure out which question we are going to be working through and what topic we're working through so that you access that information quickly and easily, all right? So that's why we do it, and it helps you. So even if it is a repeat and you have to write it out a second time, doesn't matter. You now know what you're going to be answering, okay? Identify the phase represented in diagram one. We've already done that. It's an phase one. Why isn't it anaphase 2? Because if it was anaphase 2, it would look like these guys here, except that this invagination here would not be happening. Okay, let's check our questions. It says, describe the events that took place in the phase before the one represented in diagram 2. So before diagram 2 would have been anaphase 1. So... I mean, I mean, phase two. No, you're not going to see this. This would be anaphase two. Would happen before telophase. Um, 
Remember, we go prophase, one. And then we have um, prophase, metaphase, one. Anaphase, one. And telophase. And then we have the same prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. Okay, how do you identify? Prophase one, you'll generally see crossing over. Prophase two, no crossing over. Metaph oh, and, and your chromosomes are sort of next to each other and they sort of doing their little thing like this. But your chromosome pairs are around. Prophase one, you're going to have single chromosomes just all over the show. Okay, Pro all your telophase one, all right, prophase, and from metaphase, you now start looking at a cell that is haploid. Okay, metaphase, everything is in the middle. That's your middle phase. So in metaphase one, we've got a double row of chromosomes, and in metaphase two, we have a single row of chromosomes. Anaphase, think of A for Anna and A for away. It's when it pulls away. So the chromosomes are not in the center anymore. They are pulling away towards the poles. Why? Because the spindle fibers contract and pull them apart. All right, and then anaphase a two, you are going to have whole chromosomes pulling towards poles. And in anaphase two, you have single chromatids or daughter chromosomes pulling apart. Telophase one, you're going to have this. And in there, you're going to have your chromosomes, whole chromosomes. And in telophase two, remember T for telo, T for terminal the end terminal. Here, you're going to have single chromosomes. Okay, now, we're looking at, this is our answer, because that is what's represented in the phase before the one in diagram two is anaphase two. So, what happens? The spindle fibers contract and remember, your chromosomes are attached to them and uh, attached to the, chromos uh, to the chromatids. So the spindle fibers contract and the centromere, which holds the two chromatids together, the centromeres split. Okay? And when they split, so each chromatid is pulled to the opposite pole, okay? And your, chro your chromatid can also be called, as I said, the sister chromosome, but it's better to call it a chromatid because then you can't get confused, okay? So the spindles contract, and they pull, the, the, the chromosome splits at the centrum here, yeah, which is what holds it together, and the two chromatids separate. Okay, at this point, remember, your cell is going to be haploid. Name the process that causes the chromosomes to have a combination of genes um, as shown in the diagrams. So let's just go back to the diagrams. What causes them to... Oh, it's crossing over. Look here. There's this piece here. From that one is sitting here. And the rest with this part here and that part there. So they basically shared this little piece and that little piece. And you can see the same happening across here. Alrighty. So <coughs> our answer, what is the process? It's crossing over. Okay, and that happens in prophase one. 
give one reason why the process named in 431 is important. Well, people, it's very easy. It is for genetic variation. Because remember, when these, when, when crossing over occurs, okay, you've got the pieces of genetic material from the, the maternal, and because you've got, let me just get a color here that you can see, your maternal chromosome plus the paternal chromosome Those two make up your homologous chromosomes. Okay, homologous means that they carry the same alleles in the same locus on those chromosomes. All right, so you'll have a maternal chromosome, a paternal chromosome, and during prophase one, you have crossing over where they swap bits and pieces of genetic material which means that that is then transferred into, between the, 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 the maternal and the paternal chromosomes. So we say that it is the non-sister chromatids that are going to touch each other at a point called the chysma, and they're going to swap genetic material. Also something else, so that causes genetic variation during prophase one, the crossing over. But what also does is that here during when we have um, here, you're going to have the separation of anaphase 1. This here is random. So the fact that this chromosome moves that way and this one moves that way and that one up and this one down, it could have been the other way around. It is all random. And the same during anaphase 2. This assortment between that chromosome, this one, this one, and this one, it's random. Which one pulls? It could have been this one that went there and this one that came down here. It doesn't matter. It's completely random every single time meiosis occurs. It's random. So depending on what the swapping of those chromosomes is and which direction they pull to, whether it's the one, this pole or the other pole, that is what causes genetic variation. All right, so genetic variation is random assortment during metaphase one and metaphase two, which causes genetic variation and crossing over during prophase one. All right, then, if, uh, let's use that, um, blue. If this was a human cell, how many chromosomes would be present in the cell during the phase represented in diagram one? Diagram one was anaphase one, and during meiosis one, or anaphase one, it is going to be 46 chromosomes. So during meiosis one, during prophase, still 46 chromosomes. During metaphase, still 46 chromosomes. But that's when karyokinesis occurs, which is the splitting of the nucleus. So off, directly after metaphase, even early anaphase, when, those chrome, when the spindle fibers start to pull the chromosomes into opposite, po or to opposite poles, that is when meiosis 1 has now karyokinesis has occurred, and we're now sitting with 23 chromosomes in each cell. Okay, but up, up until then, it is 46 chromosomes. All right, study B and C structures on both, of, of both chromosomes. Um, explain why they are structurally different. So let's just quickly have a quick check again. So B is a chromosome and C is a chromatid. So here, let's do a quick answer. Oh man, I need to go down here. Okay, so we're going to say so B was a chromosome, right, let me write back in my yellow, so say structure, just always make it easy for the marker to find your answers, okay, so leave lots of space when you're writing your answers, structure B consists 
of a chromosome, okay, with two chromatids, okay? Why? Because of DNA replication, that's why it's got the X shape, replication during interphase. Okay, just to refresh your memories, you have interphase occurs, which is DNA replication. That's why your chromosomes have X shapes. Okay, and then what happens? You have pro prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and cytokinesis, and we end up with two unidentical cells that are haploid. Then it goes straight into, into meiosis two. And meiosis 2 doesn't have interphase, it's got prophase. There's no crossing over in prophase 2, so you have prophase 2, metaphase 2 with only a single row of chromosomes. And then what happens? The centromere, the, the, the spindle fibers contract, the centromere splits, and you've got your chromatids going to opposite, go, go to opposite poles. So there we go. End of story. And then we have telophase. Cytokinesis occurs, and the complete total result is going to be four genetically unidentical daughter cells. So, structure B consists of a chromosome with two chromatids held together by a centromere because of DNA replication. That's the important one. Then we look at structure C, and structure C is our chromatid. Now, what happens here? It consists of a chromatid, all right? Um, because, let's just get our becauses correct here, because of the splitting of the centromere, Centromere holds those chromatids together of the chromosome during anaphase 2. And there you go. Easy peasy. People, this is not difficult. This is actually very, very easy. You must, however, know and, and learn what the different phases of meiosis are and how you can identify them, all right?